Hello, it's Matt Thomas again here with the Arturia CZB for Sonic Academy. So what we're going to do first of all is not look at the Arturia CZB. Uh -huh. I know some of you are used to these tutorials now and we've got a bit of a rhythm. Ordinarily, I do a front panel work through and see the whole synth in a quick go. Well, before we do that, we've got to talk about something else. We've got to talk about phase distortion synthesis. It's time for that uncomfortable chat that comes between every, uh, every producer and his it's protégé at some time, and you have to kind of go, right, I didn't want to tell you about this until you were older, but there's a thing called phase distortion synthesis. And your mother and I have been known to do it occasionally, as long as your mother in, in question has a Casio synthesizer, that is. The reason we're going to talk about it is it's a bit different to your bog standard subtractive synthesis. It's not um, big, rich harmonic waveforms like saws and squares being filtered down with filters. It's kind of the opposite. You start with sine waves, and using a clever piece of maths called a digital control wave that Casio came up with to make things kind of easier for you and I, you turn that sine wave into whatever you choose, a, a sawtooth, a square, etc. You, you pick it, and then that sort of relationship is sine wave to square, or sine wave to saw, or sine wave to whatever, and it kind of changes from one to the other. Now, the maths of how that's done is really quite complicated. It's to do with um, how digital waves are created. Um, there's no actual oscillator. There's just a sort of like an Excel spreadsheet, which has all the numbers you need to read out to kind of make, to plot out a sine wave. So like you know, 0, 8, 16, 24, and so on. Yeah. Well, to be really simplistic, the way that this phase distortion works is by reading through that spreadsheet, but kind of doing, say, quickly, slowly, quickly, slowly. So your, your lovely sine wave, okay, if you do the first bit quickly, it comes a bit more sort of tilted over, a bit more kind of like a, like a, like a sawtooth. Okay, so if you whiz through the first bit and then go slowly through the second bit, you get a sawtooth. Okay, so it's that kind of idea that you change the speed, you read through what's called your lookup table. We're getting really complicated now. You don't need to know this. It's okay. Relax. All you need to know is that Casio have done all this for you. Okay, and so all we have to do is decide what we'd like our wave to change into. It always starts as a sine wave, the ones that Casio give us. And then as you increase your digital control wave, either with like a, a knob or with an envelope or whatever, it becomes more like the thing you've chosen. And that's it. The other thing we need to think about is a thing called a line. Okay, now, if you've done FM synthesis, uh, frequency modulation as used in the DX7 operator, all that sort of stuff, you'll have come across a thing called an operator. An operator is an oscillator, a sound source, and a few envelopes attached just to that little oscillator. And altogether, that makes one operator. Well, Casio did a similar thing, and they called it a line. So again, we have one little sound generator, one little oscillator, and then it's got an envelope for pitch, an envelope for volume, and an envelope for that digital control wave, how, how sort of deep that effect is. So as well as just telling you all this, let's look into the synth. So you can see here, we've got like a little readout says your digital control wave is a nice picture of a sine wave. And as I tap a key, we get a little kind of chomp, 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 and it goes back to me a sign quite quickly. But you can see when I first hit it, it kind of quickly changes to a sawtooth. So let's have a look inside, see how that's done. And then we will move on to how the whole synth is laid out. OK, so we've got two lines. Now, this one over here, line two, is turned off currently. See here, we've got line select. Just number one is highlighted. So we're just using this one line, OK? Each line can have two waves playing at once, but if you make them both the same setting, then you just get one sound, okay? So if I quickly just, you'll just bear with me for one second. We've got um, an envelope attached to the digital control wave. I'm just gonna turn that off. Okay, so right now we've got Sawtooth as our wave. But as I say, what actually happens is that all the Casio's waves are actually a sign and they can be increased to whatever you've chosen here. So if I play this, there we go. And look down here, you can see it's slightly tilting the sign a little bit, but basically a sign with a tiny harmonic, basically a sign. But here we've got a control for the digital control wave, the DCW, okay? As I increase that, you can watch here, that sine wave will turn into this sawtooth. Okay, and if I select a square wave, both on the same setting, 
in here it's got a tiny sort of squariness to it but as i increase the digital control wave that sign becomes very clearly a square wave and so on there's various waveforms in here let's hear this one okay as well as that we've also got these what they call uh, kind of like a fake resonant waveform it kind of recreates the sound of a resonant filter which is an interesting thing about the dcw because if we go back to the sawtooth yeah well i guess as i open up the dcw it sounds a bit like opening up a filter so in a way we can kind of use the dcw a little like a filter in a, in a subtractive sense it's not doing that it's doing something quite different and it's important i think to understand what it's doing because you can get some quite nice sort of gags and tricks out of that but at a simple level, if you use the DCW just kind of like a filter, that's an easy way to kind of get your head around it to start with. So these resonant waveforms simply mimic the sound of a resonant filter. It's not quite the same. You can hear there's that kind of slightly like an FM synth kind of... But nonetheless... Quite convincing as well. So yeah, depending on the waveform you pick, if it's one of these wobbly guys, it's a resonant one. Uh, that's you know the resonant square, resonant triangle, resonant saw, and then you've got the non-resonant versions. So that that's basically the sound generation. It's a little different to what you're used to, I'm sure, but it's not too complex. The the maths behind it is a right old fiddle, but we don't have to do it. We don't. It's not our problem. The nearest we'll come to it is there are what are called custom waves here in the Casio CZV, which aren't in the original. With these, we get to play a little bit with that kind of fiddly maths, but we'll come to that when we do the synth properly. So just to finish, that's the phase distortion synthesis using a digital control wave to turn a sine wave into the wave you've chosen. And that is the oscillation section of a thing called a line. And a line is the oscillator, and it's a pitch envelope a digital control wave envelope and it's also an amplitude envelope. So we've got these three envelopes attached to this set of sound generating oscillating gear here and everything inside this blue area, that's it, that's the line. Sound, three envelopes. Over here, another one. Sound, three envelopes. Those two can be combined over here into like a layer of the same number one twice or one and two layered and then they can modulate each other with either ring modulation or noise modulation and we'll do that when we're doing the synth properly so i think that's the key concept arturia czv it uses phase distortion synthesis and the synth is organized into two lines now we'll move on Thanks everybody for watching, commenting and indeed liking. We really do appreciate all the support we get here on our Sonic Academy YouTube channel. So if you find this video super useful, please, we'd love you to hit the subscribe button. We update the uh, YouTube channel every week with new content. And if you want to watch some more relevant content, just click on the videos beside me.